With the Australian road transport industry acknowledged as one of the most deadly and dangerous, more so than mining or agriculture, the push is on to change industry practices. In spite of the economic imperative to keep the trucks moving, there's a new campaign of in-your-face roadside inspections, drug, alcohol and loading checks. But given tight margins and tough deadlines, it appears enforcement will have to get even more inconvenient before enlightened attitudes to public and industry safety change the culture. Port Botany, with its two import-export container terminals, a third will be operational next year, currently handles about 1,000 containers a day. This volume of boxes, as they're called, has made the two-lane each-way M5 about the busiest roadway in the country, vital to the national economy. You'd think it'd be safe inside a container, but it's not, is it? No, not at all. The, the forces can be quite massive. What we find is that uh, if the load shifts in a container in the case of an accident or severe braking or swerving or whatever, once the load starts to move, there are enormous forces generated. But road transport is now the nation's most deadly industry and poor safety practices can have devastating consequences for the truckies and civilian road users. Over 300 people have died over the last five years in heavy vehicle related accidents. However, over the last uh, five to six years, we've seen big falls in uh, the heavy vehicle crash and um, accident and injury rate as a result of that. Uh, probably for the last two to three years, it's been reasonably stable at a lower level. From our point of view, we want to see big falls still in the injury and fatality rate. Uh, the gains get much harder now. Um, anything that was obvious and easy to do, we've done. Uh, it's now about changing the culture in the industry, uh, the practices and more professional approaches across the board. The most distressing recent load-related death, a coronial inquest still has to determine the cause, occurred on June the 28th when Ingleburn man Manoj Massey, 33, a technical officer at Ultimo TAFE, was killed. A container loaded with 20 tonnes of timber toppled off crushing his sedan as the semi-trailer carrying it was making a sharp turn at the corner of Hume Highway and Cumberland Highway. Manoj's widow, Rachel, with their 10-month-old son, Jason, is still coming to terms with her husband's death. The Australian Indian Christian Church, the TAFE community and the public have rallied to support Rachel and Jason financially. I just want to say thanks to everyone because lots of people, they are helping us a lot. My husband was such a wonderful person. He was very loving husband and caring father for Jason. Another recent load-related accident caused around $1 million damage to the Tom Uglies Bridge when steel smashed through the side of a container. Speed, fatigue, alcohol, drug use to stay awake to meet delivery deadlines or to maintain cash flow for financially pressed owner-operators are all factors making the road transport industry unsafe. At 6am last Tuesday, Roads and Maritime Services officers Paul Gretsch and Paul Endicott held a briefing session for vehicle inspectors and supporting police at the Port Botany Truck Marshalling Yard. It needs to be a coordinated effort in relation to uh, the vehicles taken to either Friendship Drive or the M5. Operation Steel was underway to randomly intercept trucks over a 10-hour shift. There were licence checks, drug swabs, weight checks, maintenance checks. Drivers sometimes arc up at the interception and wait resentfully while the officials do the checks. But some, like veteran driver Tony Phillips, accept what's needed with good humour. They're loaded overseas, so you've got no, you've got no way of knowing where weight is in a container. And these, these weigh-in motion things don't help you out that much. But... This is an export block just going out. Yeah, yeah. So, what, is it unfair? Is it unfair to you? Oh, it's not unfair, but the shippers must get onto their clients to load boxes legally. On one truck, this RMS inspector found a chassis with a bolt missing and a broken weld. This truck had been found to be overweight by Port Botany's new weight-in-motion measuring technology. 
The driver had been issued a ticket requiring him to please proceed to a nominated freight station for load correction. He hadn't complied at the time he was pulled in. The inspectors are not specifically looking for illicit drugs or contraband inside the containers, that's the job of customs, but trucks under reasonable suspicion are ordered to have their seals broken. This one was found to have loose boxes of coffee machines just imported to Australia. Not much weight, not so dangerous perhaps, but the goods could so easily be damaged in transit. We'll have a talk to uh, the importer and uh, other parties in the chain of responsibility making them aware for, uh, for our, all, all our good uh, that um, they need to take uh, reasonable steps to ensure their loads are secured. And this one, escorted by police back to the marshalling yard, was full of Spanish beer. So jam-packed, the load wouldn't move, but still slightly overweight. Again, it just seems unfair for the driver because uh, the driver has no ability to physically inspect the, the load, uh, but carries the responsibility. Well, I, everybody does carry the responsibility, so what we're trying to do here today is to show the industry that we're prepared to uh, assist and uh, examine some of these loads so that we can uh, send an education message to people that are bringing uh, goods in from overseas and likewise sending goods outside of Australia that they need to take reasonable steps to ensure that these parties that are carrying these loads and the people of New South Wales are protected. This box intercepted at Wetherill Park had overweight steel ingots, about 20 tonnes, only anchored by one strand of wire. Unsafe, unseen and extremely dangerous for both the driver and any nearby road users. Also intercepted in the operation was this container load of reinforcing wire, inexplicably held by just flimsy webbing ties. In March, the Federal Parliament carried legislation, the Road Safety Remuneration Act, considered by the Transport Workers Union to be the most beneficial reform in establishing, through a tribunal, fairer pay and conditions for drivers. Thus, over time, decreasing cash flow pressures on owner drivers and company drivers. It remains to be seen just how effective this will be in changing industry safety standards. There's also the chain of responsibility laws introduced from 2005 where company directors are prosecuted for safety compliance breaches. We've laid an unprecedented number of charges under chain of responsibility. There are over 3,000 charges laid through New South Wales. We very deliberately aim those at the significant parties responsible for the culture and the practice. We'll be targeting uh, the directors of companies, uh, the owners of vehicles, uh, the loaders, the consigners, the other parties who have neglected to do the right thing, which leads to loads being unsecured, speeding drivers and so on. Enforcement campaigns on speed limiters meant to keep all trucks to 100 kilometres per hour or below, safety cam monitoring of fatigue and the new enforcement regime on loading, weight and restraint will, it seems, have to become a permanent part of transport industry compliance as the Australian consumer economy grows as the population grows. If drivers, importers, exporters and trucking companies feel aggrieved by the heavy hand of roadside interceptions on their business operations, perhaps they need only think of the trauma inflicted on the potential victims of any slack attitude to trucking safety. It's very hard for me because now I'm very lonely and very stressed. I'm just thinking, I always just think about it because it would be very to raise him up. So, because he will never know what is the father's love.